Hello there. I am Junior Fillmore. I work here at the VIP Puppet Company in the Productions Department. And somebody told me that you were interested in learning how to do puppetry. Well, great, because on this video, we're going to show you a lot of information about how to work puppets, make them look alive, and have fun at the same time. Things like how to hold your puppets, how to move your puppets, how to move your puppets when they're not talking, and how to make voices, how to make a puppet character that really stands out. Get. Just sit back and relax and watch and learn. Take care. Nice to meet you. I'm Junior Fillmore at VIP Puppet Company. Gotta go. Whoa, nice stage. Hey, hi, my name is Pops, and they've asked me to help you learn how to do some puppetry. So, first of all, I'd like to talk to you about puppet posture. And this is important about your arm. First of all, I'd like Jim here to show you what his wrist looks like inside me right now. So, Jim, could you give me a little assistance off, please? Sure. Okay, how do I look now? Do you see how Jim's wrist is bent over like this? That's how it is inside me. Okay, just a minute. Oh, I feel much better now, yes. <clears throat> well, uh, there's a couple things. You don't want your puppet to be going like this all the time. But many times, people do that behind the stage. It looks like the puppets are stargazers or something. Anyway, also, you don't want the puppet to fall asleep during the play or skit. Like that. So, <clears throat> a little bit of movement is essential, even if you're not talking, for making you look real. So, uh, <clears throat> now there's two ways you can use your arm. There's one that's more tiring and one that's a little less tiring. The straight arm effect, which is useful for stages like this, is where the puppeteer holds the puppet straight above his shoulder with his arm straight up. Jim, can you demonstrate? Sure. Yeah, like that. Okay, Jim. Demonstrate the uh, bent arm method. Well, that's what I'm using right now. Is that pretty tiring for your arm? Yes, it is. But it works great for doing camera like this. Okay, <clears throat> well, I'm Pops, and somebody else will be along to teach you more about puppets. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Hey, that's some elevator. <laughs> Say, I am Dusty, and I've been with the VIP Puppet Company for many years. Um, they've asked me to come and talk to you about how to talk. Of course, you probably know how to talk, but what I mean is how to make the puppet look like he's talking in, a, in an effective way. Now, there's two things you want to uh, pay attention to. Syllables and when you open your mouth. <clears throat> some people have a tendency to bite their words when they first start using puppets. What I mean is, instead of opening their mouth to say the syllables, they close their mouth. Something like this. Hi, my name is Dusty. And I am here to tell you about how to talk on the uh, puppet video. Now, this is how it's supposed to be done, or it would work better, okay? <clears throat> Hello, my name is Dusty. And on every syllable, I open my mouth, sometimes big, sometimes little. Now, do you understand? If you were to yell at somebody, you might want to open your mouth a little loud, bigger, like this. Hey, Junior! How long do I do this puppet video stuff, huh? And by the way, what happened to that bubble gum I gave you the other day? You were supposed to keep some for me. <clears throat> or if I was going to whisper, I might just open my mouth a little bit. So, do you get it? Uh, let's practice syllables. Now, let's pick a short word. 
like mosquito. Mosquito. Do you know any Spanish? Neither do I. Okay, mosquito. So I have opening my mouth three times to say mosquito. Now, if you had a longer word that had many syllables, of course you can't keep track of how many times you're going to open your mouth on every syllable. But sooner or later, your tongue gets used to it. Let's do a longer one, okay? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. That was a big one, okay? You could do this. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Or you could just say, Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Thank you. So sometimes if you just make a, a whirlwind out of your jaw, it works for those that have more than two syllables. Now, a word about dropping your jaw versus having whiplash of the neck, or a wrist in your case. Um, puppets should talk with their jaw dropping down to show their tongue and tonsils and uvula. Okay, so <clears throat> often when you first start puppets, you end up talking like this. Hi, I'm Dusty. I work for VIP Puppet Company. Wow, I should go to the chiropractor. Jim, you're a chiropractor, aren't you? Okay, <clears throat> so what you want to try to do is get used to dropping that jaw down. One way to help that, I'll give you a profile and show you what you can do. You kind of want to jut your face forward when you talk like this. Hello there, Dusty. I mean, I'm Dusty. You're Junior. What are you doing laying on the floor there like some dead puppet? Okay, you got to drop that jaw and kind of jut your head forward. Wow, you got a nice place there. How much money did you put into this place? Okay. Well, thank you. My name is Dusty, and perhaps we'll see you again later on this video. Perhaps not. Jim's kind of, uh, well, we won't talk about Jim. Okay. Hey. Adios, amigos. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take the, the elevator. Press the down button. Jeremy? Hi, Sally. What are you doing here? Same thing you're doing here. We're going to teach these people something about stage presence. Stage presence? What's that? You know. Weren't you paying attention during acting lessons? Oh, uh, acting lessons. Uh, I guess not. Well, <clears throat> first we're, talk we're supposed to tell them about playing to the audience. You know, not looking around when you're not talking, or, but keeping your eyes on them. And, uh, cheating out. Cheating out? I never cheat. I never cheat. Not that. I'm not talking about school. I'm talking about using your body language when you're on stage. My body talks? Body language. It's how you stand. Well, how are you supposed to stand? Boy, you didn't pay much attention, did you? You're supposed to stand with your body at an angle, almost facing the audience, like this. And then, when you talk to the other puppet, you turn like this and say your words to the audience like this. Oh, I remember now. A little bit about that, yeah. And when you're not talking, you're supposed to kind of look alive, not like a dead piece of foam. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll pretend I'm a dead piece of foam, okay? Okay. Pretty effective act, right? Well, you don't have to work hard at it. Well, what we're supposed to do is try to look alive and play the audience. Cheat out, and one other thing, try not to turn your back towards the audience. Hey, that's good advice for actors. It's a good thing I'm not one. Hey, let's go play. Okay. Escalator up. Oh, good. That was a nice ride. Say, it's me, Dusty, again, and I'm here to talk to you about arm movement. See that black thing sticking on my arm? That's called a rod. That's right, I'm a rod arm puppet. How'd you like to have a rod manipulating your arm all the time? But I guess it's the only thing that happens for me, you know. <clears throat> so, I want to talk to you a little bit about arm movement. Jim, what are you doing? I'm trying to fix your arm. Okay. Um, a lot of times people start going like this. Well, great, that's nice. Hi, how are you? 
And then they stand there and do the puppet skit like this. Well, hey, it's a great day. Sunny out and everything. Hey, where's your brother? What happened to your, your basketball? Oh, I forgot to put my arm down. So, you, you should not overdo it with the arms. Stop that, Jim. Okay. So, use a little bit and then put it down. Use it a little bit more and put it down. You know, there's a neat thing that you can use that helps hold props and things in your hand. It's called carpet tape. Jim, you love that stuff, don't you? I sure do. It works good for lots of props. Well, sometimes when he pulls it off my hand, it, it stings a little bit. But not bad, because after all, I'm made out of foam. So, <clears throat> hey folks, take care. See you later. Oh yeah, I'm going to take the elevator, this, I mean the escalator down. Down ele escalator. Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Hart, and I'm here to talk to you about arm movements. No you're not, you don't have any arms. Oh yeah, that was Dusty's job. Well anyway, I want to talk to you about puppet characters. You know what? Eyes make a big difference in what your puppet looks like. And you know what though folks? A lot of the personality is your attitude that you inject into the puppet through your voice. We're going to talk a little bit about making voices later, but for now, you just have to have an attitude, okay? Get an attitude for your puppet. Sometimes you have to try them on and see what kind of emotion they pull out of you. I'm just a nice little heart. I wouldn't hurt anybody. I hope nobody hurts me. That's my attitude. What's yours? You know, sometimes, though, I can get awful angry. And when I do, I scream! Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I don't get temper tantrums very often. It's important not to stuff your emotions, you know. It gets awful stuffy inside me. After all, I'm just a heart with an attitude. Okay? Hey, God bless you. I gotta go. Well, hello folks again, it's me, Pops, and uh, I got an assistant to help me here talk to you about stage entrances and exits, of course escalators and stuff, but I'm going to get Charlie up here and he's going to help us show us some of the dynamics of entering and exiting the stage, okay? Uh, Charlie, come here. Hi Charlie, how are you doing today? He's kind of quiet. Say, say hello to the folks out there. Okay, well, <clears throat> now, Charlie, I want to show him some, uh, how to enter and exit stage. So can you show us how to enter stage uh, with a normal uh, walk, okay? Very good. And now, how about a little jog? That was a little faster. Hey, are you in a hurry? Where you got to go? Oh, well, he's got supper on the table. His, uh, his lady's made him supper, his wife. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's, let's see the uh, old elevator routine. Going down. Not so effective. It doesn't take, make the puppet very believable, but come on up there, Charlie. Okay, now let's show the folks uh, uh, coming up the steps from, from downstairs. Hey, you're kind of fading away back to the corner, huh? Come on back up. That's kind of a fade, fade up type of a thing. You come back from the back corner and come up the steps. I'll do that one again. Okay, let's see it again. Well, that doesn't look too much like steps. Let's do some real steep steps. Okay, so folks, uh, most of all, it's important to try to look real when you're coming in and off a stage there. Instead of looking like some puppet just gets shoved up there like this. Hey! Uh-oh, 
I better go get him back together for his wife. Anyway, I gotta take him off stage. Well, folks, I got Charlie back together and he's okay. Don't worry about him. You know, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my history. You know, I was born on a farm in Arkansas, and uh, <clears throat> my dad was a potato farmer. That's right, we had a few pigs and cows and stuff. I watched him, I went around there and slopped the pigs and stuff like that. <clears throat> anyway, I ended up here up in Wisconsin with the VIP puppy company somehow. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, my favorite thing to do is fishing. What's yours? I just love to smell that catfish stuff in my hands. What about you, huh? What's your hobby? Well, <clears throat> I like to I like to watch golf on TV, but it's kind of boring too, though. Know? Yeah, <clears throat> but I'd, I'd have to say that fishing's my favorite, but but not in the winter time. I, I don't like that ice fishing stuff, even though I am made out of fleece. Uh, you know, fleece does keep you warm, but <clears throat> I'm just not a ice fisherman type. Hey, Jim, your hand's showing. Well, anyway. What else do I like to do? I like to play dominoes. You ever play dominoes? Yeah. And I have a couple of kids. In fact, did you know that Dusty is my son? That's right. Doesn't look a whole lot like me, but yeah, Dusty's my son. I'm so proud of him. He works for the VIP Puppet Company, and he wears that tie so nicely. Well, <clears throat> hey, your head's showing, Jim. Well, anyway, what else about me? Well, my wife and I, uh, my wife, bless her heart, she's passed away, but uh, we had a lot of good years together. We were married for 46 years. Why am I telling you all this stuff? Well, I'm telling you this stuff because it's important for you to write a biography, maybe for one of the puppets you create or one of the puppets you buy. It's a good idea to write a biography that talks about who the puppet is. It's part of developing the puppet character, you see. And boy, am I a character. That's what they tell me. Yeah, I like to tell fishing stories. Hey, you want to hear one? The other day I caught a fish that was so big, the houseboat I on, that I was on began to sink. Now, if you believe that, then I got some more stories to tell you. Okay, I'll tell you about the one time that I caught the biggest catfish out of the Wisconsin River there ever was. You guys are watching. Well, hey, I'm just practicing in front of the mirror. Jim always says, uh, practice your puppets in front of the mirror to see if how, how you're doing. You know, if you got the mouth drop thing and uh, you don't look dead like this. Jim, stop it. Stop it, Jim. Get my neck up there. Jim, stop it. There we go. Okay, so if you practice in front of the mirror, you can see how well your puppet looks. If it looks alive or dead or how it's talking and stuff like that. So I encourage you, use your mirror. You got a mirror at home? Well, good. Use it. You know, there's a Bible scripture that says, if you look into the Word of God and forget what it says, it's just like looking at yourself in the mirror and you forget who you are when you walk away. Well, anyway, practice in front of the mirror a lot with your puppets. Okay? God bless you. You know, I, I should go get some Windex. Uh, hello there. My name is Professor Testu, and Jim has talked to me about coming and talk to you about voices. You know, he covered a bit of that a little good bit ago with the brain and stuff. I was talking about more of attitude. Well, me, Professor Testu, I'm going to talk to you about how to change your voice, and I'm going to change my voice. So please don't get in a panic attack when my voice changes, okay? Because you have to know I am just a puppet, but Jim is going to change my voice. So, now, <clears throat> my voice is a combination of uh, deep and with an accent, you know, kind of an Indian accent. Of course, I'm not from India, but <clears throat> ineffective accent. Anyway, now, 
let's put it, uh, my, my voice into a high mode, Jim. Okay, like a girl. That falsetto thing that you guys do. Okay. Is this believable for me? This voice doesn't sound appropriate, but you can do it too. Make your voice high. Now there's a couple high voices. You can be a high voice! Or a little nice girl, like that. So, do you get what I mean? Making a higher voice. Now, Pops is a bit old, and so his voice is a little bit shaky and a little bit gruff. Now, <clears throat> if I wanted to do a gruff voice, I could just go like this. Now get that laboratory cleaned up. This is a nonsense you were doing here. That is gruff. But now I don't want to be gruff. I want to do the accent like Pops. You know, he's older. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty rickety these days. I can hardly stand up without my cane and 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 catch my breath before I say anymore. And you know the clothes I got on my back? I've been wearing them for at least a week. And you probably can't smell it out there in TV land, but but I can. And I think I'm gonna pass out. Hmm. Well, did you get the idea about the gruff voice? Good. Now you can do a voice that is kind of um, tense, okay? Tense and a little bit high, like Dusty, okay? I'm going to do the tense high voice for you. Are we ready, Jim? Yes, I think so. Okay. <clears throat> okay, it's kind of a buzzy voice. And I, 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 kind of sounds like, uh, who is that? Timon, yeah. Timon from, uh, what is that video? Um, uh, Lion King, yeah. Timon has kind of a high, squeaky voice like this. Kind of a buzzing voice. Yeah. And then you can add a, a, a um, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, accent to it. And talk kind of like from New York or something. Now, do you understand what I'm talking about? The high, kind of a buzzy voice. Not a falsetto. But you kind of tense up your vocal cords. Which, by the way, as a doctor, I want to inform you. Well, I'm a professor too, you know, PhD, makes me a doctor. But, by the way, you got to be careful when you use your voice a lot. Especially that high squeak, that buzz sound. Because that can strain your vocal cords and you can end up with nodules. Now, you don't want that, do you? Of course not. So, you got to be careful. And if you're using your voice a lot, it'd be good to get some coaching from a voice professional. Jim, you don't have any nodules, do you? Yes, I, I think he got a little one. He had his throat checked up. And uh, <clears throat> so you be careful with that buzzy one. Got any more uh, voices? Oh, yes. Uh, how about the uh, news announcer one? Broadcaster? Oh, yes. Yes, we had a news announcer guy around here called, called B Brian Gumball. Anyway, he sounded like this. Hello, folks. Welcome to the 8 o'clock news. I'm Brian Gumball. On the top story tonight, the election is hung. Actually, the election isn't hung, but it's a tie vote, pretty much. I'm Brian Gumball for News at 8. So, do you understand now? You, you, you make that, that was kind of a deep voice, had some authority to it, okay? You can put authority to it. Or if you use that low voice and take away the authority, then you have a a shy boy who doesn't know much like this. Well, I don't know. I was just, I was just minding my own business when all of a sudden that dog came over here and tore my leg off. I guess he tore both of them off. Okay then. Do you understand about the low voice? You put some attitudes with your voices. And you can have many puppets with just like three or four different kinds of voices. You better practice. You can write down the kind of attitudes and voices you'd like to have for your puppets. But you know, when you put a puppet on your hand, it's amazing how sometimes you, the character just comes right out from your heart. Or your emotions, or your brain. I'm not sure where it comes out of Jim. But <clears throat> that is what you do to make different voices. Okay? It's been a pleasure to talk to you folks out there in uh, Videoland. And 
do you do you own this place or or do you rent? But anyway, my name is Professor Testu. Have a nice night. Sure, bad ends out there. Well, how are you doing, Sally? Hey, we're supposed to tell these folks about how to use a puppet stage. Yeah? Well, like what? Well, first of all, we should be standing straight up in the puppet stage, and the most of our body should be showing, but not the puppeteer's hand or arm. Oh, I get it. And what about his head? Jim, keep your head down there. Don't show it up here. That's right. The other thing that we sometimes get in trouble with as puppeteers is that we lean on the stage. Oh, yeah, that's not good. Here, show what I mean, okay? Okay. Some puppeteers tend to lean their puppet on the stage in that fashion. For one, it makes the puppet look like he's going to fall asleep or fall out of the puppet stage. And for the other, it makes the puppet stage move, and it's hard on the puppet stage, basically. Yeah, and uh, sometimes you want to hang your arm out there like that so that I look like I'm close to the audience, but I'm not leaning on the stage. That's right. And uh, anything else that we should tell them about stages? Well, take care of them. They're an awful nice to have. And uh, I can't think of anything else. Okay. Well, let's go. That ice cream you bought me was great. Hey, you want to go play Legos? Little Legos? Sure. Let's go. Hey, did you enjoy the video? I hope so. By now you must have enough information to make your puppets really come alive. Well, for a VIP puppet company, I'm Junior Fillmore. Have a great day, and God bless you. class. I am Professor Testube and today I'm going to tell you about sin. Now, in the beginning God made man and woman to be on the earth and to be God's friend. He told them, do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil because he wanted them only to think of good things and do good things, not bad. But they chose to disobey. You see, they sinned against God and this made them enemies of God. And all they did was think of bad things. Not good. This was terrible. But the great creator had a solution. Get it? Solution? <laughs> okay, he, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And Jesus' blood was the payment for the sins of man. And if we choose Jesus and his forgiveness, we become friends with God again. Isn't it wonderful? Let us review these facts again. God made man on the earth to be his friend. Everybody say friend. Thank you. But they sinned against him by eating from the tree that he told them not to. And they became his enemies, thinking of only bad things and doing only bad things. But God had the solution. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And his blood was the payment for the sin of the man and the woman. His blood washes away sin when we ask him to forgive us. And through Jesus, then, we can become God's friend again. Isn't it wonderful? But we all have a choice to make. We must either choose to stay an enemy of God or to become his friend again through Jesus. Thank you very much. This is a great place for a nest. I'll put this right here and right there. Hmm. Hey, I never saw this sign before. I wonder who put that there. Oh well. <laughs>